Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, I wanted to make a full video on almost everything there is to know about Vol Spark, leveling, um, you know, considerations, all that kind of stuff for basically a new player who's maybe never played it before. So I made a table of contents here that'll go down the list in the YouTube video that when I export it, I'll make in the description like a kind of a table of contents as well. So you can just skip to the parts where um, you want to listen to. So basically, I'm just going to do a couple maps for you guys. And while I'm mapping, I'll you can like watch the gameplay first because I think that's important first and foremost to see if you even like playing this build. And then afterwards, um, you know, you can ask whatever questions below. So on this build, this is my favorite build. So uh, I really enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. But uh, Volspark is is a great mm, for for any kind of player who wants to clear fast. Okay, it's amazing. And so let's talk about leveling. When you're leveling up, it really sucks. Whatever you do, do not level as a regular Sparker these days. And at this point in the league, what you can do is you can get yourself an item called Abaras Hooves, okay? That'll make everything very smooth. You'll just walk through all the content. Oh, I didn't crit. And you'll basically have a really good time leveling. Now, if you can't afford that, because at the time of this video, uh, everything is, they're all like two exalts or something. So maybe you can't afford that. Uh, but don't worry too much about leveling because your goal is just to get to dry lake as fast as possible. And so you can do things like blade fall totems. You can do things like flame blast totems. You can even do like, you know, blade vortex with like a plus one tabula and stuff, which is like a little bit cheaper. And uh, you'll be okay. Now, when you're leveling, okay, remember your goal is just to get to dry lake so you can just become a regular sparker. Make sure you're. Mm, if you're like new to the league or something, that you have a spark and hopefully a vol spark leveling in your off sockets because um, most of the damage of the build comes from just gem levels. So if you get to like Tried Lake and you have like a level, what's it called? Uh, level 15 spark, like, oh, that's reflect. Um, or anything like that, you're gonna have a bad time. So make sure you just like, hopefully you can buy the level 20 Vol Spark, level 21 Spark eventually, and you'll be okay right off the bat. Uh, afterwards, um, so the gem setups, we'll go over that as well. Uh, Vol Spark is linked to Spell Echo to cast 200 projectiles instead of one. And uh, it's also linked to Control Destruction. It's also linked to let me kill this guy first. It's also linked to faster projectiles, linked to pierce and uh, increased crit strikes. And so that's the setup here. And then your regular spark is linked to pierce. It's linked to spell echo, uh, faster prot, right? And then if you're feeling really, really, um, you know, in, in the danger, maybe you can put your spark, you put it into your six link and now you're a regular sparker and you're good to go. So you can do that swap if you want. That's the gem setups. Uh, other gem setups for this build, uh, are going to be uh, shield charge is your main movement skill so you use that to charge all the way around the setup for that is going to be shield charge linked to faster attacks so those are the only two that are necessary in insanity gloves we'll go over that later though uh, culling strike for just this isn't really for the coal uh, it's only for the attack speed while the coal is sometimes nice and then fortify this is also optional i just like a little bit extra safety um P uh, I'm sorry, uh, Wrath, Discipline, and Enlighten will be your uh, final setup here. And then here, Cast with Damage Taken, uh, Warlord's Mark, and Sun Enlightening Golem, although this isn't really linked to the Cast with Damage Taken because it's too high of a level. And uh, that's about it for this. Let me do another map and then we can talk about some more stuff. The Ascendancy, uh, you have to go Inquisitor, okay? Inquisitor is like the only viable option because it just outclasses everything else. Uh, reason being is uh, Inquisitor, it has Instruments of Virtue. And it's one of the very few builds where you're gonna have your instruments, like both halves uh, of your instruments up at 100% of the time because you're always gonna be shield charging around to reposition and you're always gonna be casting your spark like sometimes, right? When you're not like uh, directly um, like just shield charging around the map. So 100% uptime here is very nice. Uh, Righteous Providence, 100% increased crit chance. So like when you have um, increased crit gems, it's going to be basically 7% free crit on your Vol Spark. Very nice. And uh, this, so Inevitable Judgment is, uh, is, I can't say enough about this. 
if you think about like a pen gem, like cold pen, lightning pen, fire pen, it's basically more than doubling your, your damage, right, with that one gem. Well, this, if you get like a resist roll on a boss and it's like maybe uh, the boss has like a natural 40 something percent resist and even with like rares that have like the resist affixes and stuff like that, oh, you're gonna have a bad time. So this is basically sometimes like tripling, quadrupling your damage. And it's always so good to do pure damage and this will help your like shatters and stuff for your chill of corruptions, which we'll talk about later so this like is is i can't say enough about this this gives you so much pure damage you don't have to worry about um, map roll so it negates uh elemental equilibrium because you're always going to be critting so uh elemental equilibrium fails to matter any kind of resist rolls does not matter it just feels really good and then this node right here this is defensive augury of penitence basically people pay like hundreds of exalts to get plus one max res on their item right whereas you get two percent for free because it's eight percent less elemental damage and you're 75 percent resist anyways so eight percent of 25 right you're, you're getting two percent max res for two ascendancy points that's like outrageous and this helps because the sparks uh they're little hits anyway so reflect isn't really that scary with your being tars with your uh, warlord's mark and this makes it even less so to a, a big degree so let's go ahead and do this map and the next I want to talk about is um, uh, another thing is the highlighting so if you see here these underground laws I, I highlight them on the map with uh, I think it's augury of penitence you see and so when there's underground monsters you're gonna be able to see them easier indoor maps it makes mobs easier to see and so that's really nice as well it's kind of like map packs it's really nice and so let me grab this and I'll start ball sparking here and uh, so gearing before your sky force right what like most people won't have a sky force early in the league and then even later in the league unless like not everyone can know life the game like we can and so it might be a little bit tough so what do you do if you can't afford sky force uh well it's totally okay because there's these boots out there called void walker boots okay and void walker boots what they allow you to do is you get to drop your pierce gem they're really cheap maybe like 10 chaos and you have pierce for free that's really nice so void walkers and you'll still get like the other stuff you'll still get a choir i'm not wearing a choir right now because i've kind of um upgraded my guy enough to be able to wear a regular amulet but you're gonna wear a choir a call of the brotherhood void walker boots and then your sack harvest and chills and that's what you're gonna do uh, before you get your headhunters and you can even use a bright beak for your weapon before you graduate to your dadger and eventually you'll graduate to you maybe you can still use a foil even though the attack speed doesn't matter anymore um, well the attacks per second doesn't matter anymore and uh, all that good stuff uh, what else affixes on gear okay on your helm you're gonna need a uh, projectile speed helm uh, because projectile speed is both offensive and defensive, right? Offensive because you cover more AoE. As you can see here, the faster your proj goes out, the more AoE you're covering in the same amount of time. And also, it's defensive because um, the faster your proj reaches the mobs... Oh my god, I'm frozen. The faster your projectiles reaches the mobs, uh, the less time they have to react and do any kind of damage to you, right? So you're not going to really take any damage. Oh, my lightning golem wasn't out. Uh, so uh, that's why you do that. We'll go back here. Let me get Sky Force real quick. Nope, didn't get it. So that's the affixes there. Uh, on the chest, you're just getting a regalia. The chest will carry you. If you get like a 700, even like a 500 plus is fine to get you started. It's going to carry the day for you, uh, which is why I'll talk about CI later. You get Call of Brotherhood is necessary. Um, shield, just make sure you get some kind of spell crit roll. High ES is fine. Maybe some resists. And then eventually Dadger is um, a few affixes. Basically the stuff you see here, like spell damage, attack speed, increased crit, multi, and then there's another roll that's an added elemental to spells is what you're looking for on a Dadger. Make sure, try to get like um, a T1 attack speed roll because that'll affect your shield charge speed. But that's not necessary for us. Just make sure you actually have a local uh, attack speed roll because that's a more modifier to your shield charge. Okay, uh, on gloves, you insanity gloves are actually necessary. Like I think these are actually... Um, like mandatory on the build some people will tell you otherwise but don't don't listen to them you need this this is the only place you can get a more modifier on your attack and cast speed okay so for shield charge you'll be a race car you'll just be zooming around and like like look at this i hit i hit my um silver and my quicksilver ready and look at this like you're just you're actually a race car here and it feels really good 
Now the next thing I'll talk about is um, you'll use a crystal belt to get you started before you get your headhunter. Once again, headhunter is not required, but crystal belt, double resist, f reduce flash charges used if you can afford it. And, uh, you know, maybe like I mean, 40 ES roll as a prefix, right? Then you'll get 120 ES on your belt. Oh man, that's so much ES. That's crazy. Boots, before you get Skyforce, you'll get yourself some sorcerer boots uh, that have just like... Uh, that have just ES, right? Like this, 274 ES. This one's bad because it doesn't have 30% move speed. Make sure you can get 30% move speed if you can help it, okay? Because that'll affect your shield charge. Shield charge is still better than whirling blades because uh, shield charge uh, factors in move speed and attack speed. So get yourself high ES boots, resist move speed. That's very important. So that's before Skyforce. Uh, the rings, uh, when you're using your choir, you can gear with a topaz ring or a diamond ring, right? Because lightning resist becomes the same thing as crit with a choir of the storms. So get yourself some kind of ES for the defensive. Get yourself kind of, uh, as much resist as you can afford. That's the most important thing. The life roll on this ring actually doesn't matter. And what else is there? That's about it. Now let's talk about also the flask setup, okay? So you need something that removes shock from your Vinktars. You have to have it or else you're just like, <laughs> you have a more multiplier on yourself, which is really bad, really dangerous. And the Vinktars here is negated by diamond and removes shock on use. This always lasts um, like the same time as this, so it's always canceled out. That's the only reason for these two. Also, diamond is necessary because it, if you don't know how unlucky uh, critical chance rolls work, it's... It's your chance not to crit squared. So it's amazing. You get like the most benefit at 50% crit chance, and then but you still get a lot of benefit after that. I have a chemist silver flask of heat. You need freeze removal. Um, the sky force that you get, or like a Kiara's that you can get, will remove stun. But if you don't use those, you need some kind of freeze uh, removal. Okay, Kiara's is the substitution here, but I use this. Uh, very scary when you open a strong box and you get frozen. Uh, that's puts you in a lot of danger. And also like the maps, the map roll that's like elemental status ailments, uh, percentage chance, that can cause you a lot of danger too. So get this. Um, when you pop this, it'll also help you on chilled ground. So a map that rolls chilled ground, this will make you immune for what, like six seconds times whatever your flask effectiveness is. Uh, this is necessary for shield charge to move fast, okay? This is like makes a huge difference. You don't have to have this though. This you can take out, put in a Rumi's for more safety. You can even put in like a um, Adziri's Promise for a little bit extra leech or like maybe that extra deeps or anything else you want. Like it doesn't matter. This is, but I feel that if you're just clearing maps, you need this, okay? And then this is for mana because as you can see, I didn't spec into this node here. Uh, I used to, but I dropped Charisma. And so because of that, I need a mana flask. I also don't have mana leech on my boots, the lab enchant, so I have to have this. And it's very good because bleeding will kill you a lot of the time. Canyon boss, uh, things like that, they will actually like completely beauty blast you and you won't feel good about that. But this you can, and this has so many charges that you just spam this when you think like a bleed is coming or when you see the uh, corrupting blood circles around you, you just spam it because it has so many uses and you're fine. And other than that, that's a flash out. Here's the order. Make sure you get yourself um, a, a Logitech. It's if you don't know, it's like it's this mouse that has like um, twelve buttons on the side here that your thumb can fit over four or five of them, right? And so. What that does is it allows you to do a flask order that um, puts you in the most amount of safety. And that means, so you go one, two, you push, you push these at the same time, and then you can push these at the same time as well. And then you hit your uh, Volspark. Volspark crit chance is calculated at the time that you cast it. So make sure you hit these two <laughs> before you, you hit your Volspark, okay? And then you can hit these as well. So all of these at once and then Volspark and then you just you just run around and then you, you spark everywhere. And that's the, the flask order. Let me do another uh, map here after I put this stuff away and I'll talk about CI versus low life because that is a, a big point of contention sometimes. Like, why do you go CI? Why, do I, why don't I go low life? And I'll tell you right now. So let me, let me do this one. 
So CI is safer. Uh, once again, the chest carries the day. Uh, Shad's only has 400 something ES if it's well rolled, and that's I don't think that's enough. Having like 11, 12, 13k is pretty easy with CI. And being immune to poor, like the, you want to be immune to as many map mods as possible, right? So like Inquisitor makes you immune to elemental equilibrium. It makes you immune to any kind of resists and all that good stuff. Whereas uh, like Caustic Clouds, Poison on Hit, uh, Desecrated Ground, those map mods are all negated by going CI. And that's nothing to laugh at. That's actually really good because you want to be able to play this as lazy as possible. You want to spark as fast as you can. Now, I'm not doing it too well because I'm like talking and stuff, but uh, you want to start from a level where you can like build up from, right? That's always my philosophy. You don't want to like be, always have to be worrying about certain things. So CI is the best and uh, it, it negates map mods. It gets you a really high pool because, so if you watch my, I'll skip this breach because it's taking too long, but if you watch my ES, when I'm killing mobs, my ES almost never moves, okay? But when it does move, you're gonna you're gonna remember it. See, like even in the middle of this like uh, essence pack, it doesn't move. So when you do get hit, you want to survive that one large hit that's gonna be coming your way, okay? And with uh, CI, you're gonna have a much easier time getting uh, the the very high levels of ES needed. Whereas uh, low life, yes, you get more damage, but as you can see, I don't. This is a T13 map. I don't need more damage. It's it's not necessary actually. So you're risking a lot to just get 30% more damage, and I don't think that's worth it. Also, there are things like Desecrated Ground will um, stop your ES regen. Poison on hit will stop your ES regen, and so it's uh, a little bit a uh, tiny bit more stressful. But if you think you can micromanage those things, maybe you want the extra damage. I don't know. So my my recommendation is CI is uh, so much better. Okay. Uh, other than that, let's talk about Atlas. So if you notice the in my maps that I've been doing, I've been doing mud guys. There's atolls and stuff like that. Ooh, a dank den. Look at this. Okay. And the reason I do that is because Volspark has always been the fastest at open layout maps. It's faster than Cospreys in just the open layouts in like the the worst layouts. It's actually it feels miserable. I can do one to show you what it what it feels like, but on these open ones, you feel like a god. And it's like the it's always been the fastest clearing build for certain map layouts. That's like undeniable. And so that's another good thing about it. Uh, that's why you have to shape your Atlas. Uh, I have a, another Atlas guide video on the YouTube and in the Twitch chat. There's a command, so you can look at that. I'm not gonna go over too much, but the rule is I'm only doing dunes. Uh, I was doing strands. I shaped canyons for better performance, but and then mud geyser and atoll, right? Those are really my only tier 10, 11, 12, 13. I also have like cemetery up here, but that's for different reasons. So you, when you run good layout maps and you shape your atlas correctly, uh, the monies and the experience will be like really, really good. So I'm level 97 right now, and I, I die a lot, but I still like maintain this level of XP, and I hope to get uh, 100 one day. So I'll do another one here. Um, let's just do, let's just do this one, okay? And I'll talk about uh, the jewels. So on jewels, what you're looking for is is a lot of things. So luckily, you have um, a whole lot of modifiers available to you. You have lightning damage, you know, flat damage, attack speed with daggers, attack speed with swords. If you're going uh, foils, you also have things like uh, increased uh, lightning damage. You know, crit multi with elemental, crit multi with spells, global crit multi. So any kind of damages that applies to uh, that applies to spells you can just use as a filter and they should be easy to shot for maybe like really good four modules will be you know a couple exalts and uh, three modules are like super cheap so you won't have any issues shopping for jewels especially since it shares so many of things with cosprey's discharge and people are always like trying to roll those jewels so there is abundance if you're willing to spend just a little bit of money and i always recommend you know if you plan on going headhunter, you're gonna need maybe like a 10% resist jewel or two to kind of negate the effect of Call of the Brotherhood has low resist, headhunter has no resist, sky force has no resist, uh, <laughs> acquire the storms has actually negative 30 lightning res. So you're going to need to get really, really good gear, or you're going to have to get jewels with resist. So make sure you add a resist. Um, mod on your filter and that's what i'll say about jewels 
you my filter is also a command in my twitch chat so you can just copy my filter if you want i don't care if you guys whoop all those since i have all mine already and so jewels are super important because um you need three sacrificial harvests on this build right there's one chill corruption and you can only use one see it says limited to one and then you want your sacrificial harvest for uh, 30 percent okay get yourself 29 or 30 percent don't buy 20 percent ones uh, if you buy 20 percent ones you're actually losing out on uh, you're losing out on like a, a jewel slot so three sack harvest to make it feel uh, ultra smooth one chill of corruption that means at higher levels you only have two jewel slots you have one here and you have this jewel socket here as your free uh, sockets okay and so you want to make sure that your jewels are really good so i have resist in here and then three damages and then i have uh resist and attack speed and and um, one damage is here so you can do anything you want with that let's talk about the skill tree a little bit let me go back to town to do this so we'll go back to leveling a little bit when you're leveling it's the same skill tree you follow this pathing but the only difference you do is you take any kind of life that's close and then you respec out of it. So discipline and training here. You can go like um, like quick recovery here. You can go over here. You can get melding here for life. You can get written in blood for life. You can get this thing heart and soul for life. You can even get blood siphon for life. You can get blood drinker for life. And just respec out of it. You have more than enough uh, respecs without using regrets. But ultimately, you're going to need this skill tree here. So get close to this while you're leveling. And then when you hit a certain level, if you bought all your CI gear, I went CI at like 2k uh, es and because I, I just couldn't stand life anymore but that's maybe not the best choice when you buy uh at this point in league decent es gear when you go see i should have like four or five k and that's fine just make sure you have the points for ghost reaver and vault pack and maybe if you don't have like the boot enchant you're gonna need buy a vinktars as soon as possible and that'll be fine so this is the tree uh the reason i i did some of this is uh, there's certain variations you don't have to go this kind of es if you don't care about leveling this is like just safety for me because i might want to go 100 soon and so you can drop this and get more damages like one two here you can also like get this jewel socket here if you want like this isn't like necessary either this is just for the safeties and you can either go here one two three four for this jewel here and uh, attack speed is important so a, a counterintuitive thing is like why do i get like attack speed on jewels and like attack speed here um, and like movement speed here and all this and like attack speed here why do i get this because at a certain point the only thing that's going to stop you with vol spark is how fast you can get to the next map and that's factored by your shield charge so you want that to be as fast as possible you don't need that much damage i have 5.9 on vol spark and hideout and uh regular spark 29k in hideout so it gets a little bit higher with buffs but it's it's not uh, anything immense okay what else do i need to talk about okay uh okay loot filter let's talk about the loot filter real quick and uh, let's just go back into this map so another thing about the vol spark is when you see stuff on the ground you'll see that like i hide everything okay you see this this is my loot filter i hide all rares except for anything that's close to like half a chaos or more or es bases like good es base huber circlets vol regalia sorcerer boots mm, sorcerer gloves all that good stuff and the reason is when you're vol sparking right let's say like there's some mobs behind this tree okay this that portal scroll is a mob like that there's a mob right there but this portal scroll is a mob if if you're showing all this crap like all the rares your mind is going to look here and you might like run into this tree right because you were looking down here and you didn't see the mobs up here so like now you have to like reposition you have to go around the tree and that kind of sucks whereas see this it wasn't shown so if it's not shown i just charge up here and the second i see the mob there's nothing else around me that i need to pay attention to so i can just charge around the tree and then start you know um spilling the juice all over the mobs here right and it makes it easier to traverse the map and you might not think that like you know that half second that you spend looking at this brandish kite uh, branded kite shield mattered but this adds up in a big way it like slows down your clear and it also like you lose the juice a lot more so hide whatever items you can that aren't necessary uh, another thing is uh, shield charge strategy so 
always hold down your left clicks and let me tell you what I mean. So right now, I'm, let's just imagine I'm a new player and uh, I'm not holding down left click, right? I'm just sh charging around and this is fine. See, I can get around like this. Let me hit my, my quicks over here or my silver. See, I'm just shield charging. This is totally fine. You might be like, okay, I can do this. But when you run into a tree here, see, if you're not holding down your left click, you just kind of run into the tree and then you let go and then you click and then you shield charge again. And that's like kind of see like I let go, I click and then I go again. Whereas if you hold down left click the entire time, you can still cast false spark. Uh, if you have a Naga mouse and stuff, you can still hit all these buttons. And so the second you run into something, what you do is you let go. See, I run into something, I let go of um, w right here and I'm instantly moving there's never gonna be a situation where you run into something you let go of your um, your shield charge and you're not instantly moving you cannot get stuck on something um, when your left click is held down because you'll just contour around it so shield charge into something let go and then you contour around it instantly and then you're good to go you can keep shield charging so always hold down left click see like I run into this tree right oh no I, hold, I let go and I'm moving again whereas if you don't you, you shield charge you let go you're still standing here and you have to like click again and that's really annoying another thing is you gotta look at the edge of the screen so like if you look at the mini map here like this rock okay this rock right here will, will slow you down but on the mini map you won't see it so uh, this is like the big chicken strategy. You always have to make sure you look at the edge. I suggest like three quarters, like right here, right? And that way, like that, that rock, if I'm charging over here, I see it as it's coming into view and I can go around it. Whereas if I have the mini map open, I can just, I, I run into it and then and I have to do like this, right? So little stuff like that adds up over time. I'm not the best at it, but I'm trying to get better. And uh, so make sure you're looking at the edge of the screen. I know that's like really obvious, but you'd be surprised at how much time it saves you just by looking at the edge. Do not look at your character, okay? The only time you look at your character is when like you're in a breach and you're getting like surrounded and stuff. Then you can look here to see like which way you need to cast your sparks. But otherwise, look at the edge. You're not gonna like die while you're charging, okay? Cause like charging is basically phasing. You go through everything. And so, yeah, do that. Uh, another thing, name locking. I'll talk about this. Uh, name locking is very important, so. Let me drop this jeweler's orb. So most people, they see a jeweler's orb, they click on it. Let's say you missed, okay? I, I didn't click, I clicked right below it, right? I click right below it, I go here. Oh, I don't have it, and a shield charge away. Oh no, I still don't have it. You can name lock it. So you can hold down left click, and now when I charge away, you see this? My mouse is over here, but I'm still going back towards it. So this allows me to always go back to that item I want, and so now when I pick it up, I got it, I can run away. And if I didn't get it, I'd be going back to it. See, oh, I didn't get it, but now I go back and I pick it up anyways by name locking it. So name locking items can save you a lot of time um, rather than just clicking in on it and then and then shield charging away. So all these things added up do save you a little bit of efficiency on the Vol Spark and it'll make you a little bit more monies and uh, hopefully make the game a little bit more fun. I know it is for me. Now. Another thing uh, about this uh, this build, uh, let's talk about some inconveniences. Be very careful in now with Breach League when you're being surrounded that you're not next to a tree. So let me show you the worst part about Vol uh, Spark and Vol Spark. You see this? I'm casting my Vol uh, my Spark, but a rock or a tree will eat it. And with regular Spark cast, it'll eat the entire thing. Sometimes it's so annoying. Um, like out here it won't but look at that hitbox though for this see this I cast over here I got it but right here this this whole arc right here like maybe like 90 degrees or more 120 degrees you, you lose your juice and then with Vol Spark too if I were to cast like let's say I was like right up against this thing okay if I cast my Vol Spark right here or right here it would eat this entire cone of projectiles the other uh, area would shoot out for vol spark but here it would eat it all so you're in a lot of danger when you mm, when you see like this mob here right if, if this mob is attacking me i can't kill it see i can't i actually can't kill it and it just like blew up on me and you won't notice before you're dead so that kind of sucks about vol spark that's always been the case and there's no easy fix for that Overall thoughts, it's one of the fastest builds. Beginning League, there's nothing that's faster. If you play efficiently and you do all the other stuff right and you don't waste a lot of time, 
uh, it'll actually be maybe some of the most fun you've had if you like just killing mobs and you actually like getting like the loots. Uh, sometimes the loot will drop off screen, which really sucks, and you only get like two sound uh, notifications before like it doesn't sound anymore, and that can be kind of uh, annoying. But so I'll just do this map real quick, just so you can see a little bit more uh, Volspark action and how it works. Really fun build overall. But if you're looking for something a little bit less meta, a little bit less OP, because the gear, like once you get the really good gear, it starts to feel even better and better. So what else? Oh, bandits. Okay, you're gonna take, uh, first you're gonna take resist because once again, with the uniques you use, you're not gonna be like fully red map capped, okay? But when you hit 179 resist, you can respec out, you'll drop back down to 169, and then you can take the skill point when you get your uh, gear all sorted out, okay? And what else is there to talk about? No, that's about it for Volspark. Creighton is uh, the cruel bandit, Alira is the merciless bandit. Once again, attack speed very important on this build, and I uh, can't say enough about that. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit, um, how about what new players need to know. Let me just imagine that I'm a newer player. What would I want to know? Oh, okay. So you probably want to know this. Um, skill point considerations. When you're deciding like, against things, one point on the tree at the end game is worth 4% attack speed, 6% ES, maybe like 12%, 10 to 12% uh, spell damage, and then like jewel slots. If you get four mod jewels that are really good, they're actually worth like five points. And uh, But if you can travel like three points to get a jewel, I would, I would do it. Four points even, yes, I would. It's just I don't have enough levels for this. And... Um, other than that, that is about it. Let me take a look at this doc. Oh, Ascendancy Order. So I'm gonna do this. Always Inevitable Judgment first, then Instruments, then Augury, and then you're good to go. Buy the Lab Carries if you need to. That's about it. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can just, uh, you can ask.